Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze and interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. This is Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can also find us every Monday morning from 6 to 6.30 at bff.fm. Well, yo, 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 yo. One of going? these days I'm going to get you a real oh. sound effect. No, I like it. I feel useful. <laughs> uh, we're heading back to Sundance, where we spoke with the director of the Hillary Episodic, which is on Hulu right now. Her name's Nanette Bernstein. Um, she's kind of like a salt of the earth. She was real cool. New Yorker. Mm-hmm. And I, we liked her a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I think we had 12 minutes with her or so. Mm-hmm. Not enough yeah. time. No, no. And this, <laughs> I mean, imagine being hired to direct this doc. Like, it's a lot. It's a lot of pressure. Obviously, Hillary is a very divisive, polarizing character. Um, and just, that's a lot of weight to put on your shoulders. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, she, she swore on air, I think. <clears throat> and yes, because I feel like I looked at you right in the eye. I'm like, was it, at least it wasn't me. <laughs> I, had to, I had to edit for air yeah. on, the, on, the, on the NPR station. That's <laughs> Respect. Right. That's right. So um, why don't you listen to our interview with Nanette, and we will talk to you on the other side. Right now, we'd like to welcome to the show from the four-part docu-series, Hillary, Nanette Burstein. Thank you so much for being here, Nanette. Thank you for having me. So we'd love to start with having you introduce us to this subject. Is is Hillary her name? I don't know I don't, who you you're talking about. Yeah, I don't yes. know who you're talking about. Vaguely familiar. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. I've heard uh, that name before. Yeah. Uh, well, that, you know, that's interesting. It's 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 about Hillary Clinton. Um, it both interweaves her life story with candid interviews from her, her husband, friends, journalists. Um, and it also uh, interweaves that with the 2016 election where we have never before seen uh, clips of her and her staff behind the scenes during the election period, um, which is, you know, <laughs> revealing and dramatic and unfiltered. We're all still in therapy from, from yeah, that. I, <laughs> yeah. Well, this might be healing. How did you get approached with this project? I got a call from a producer I know who said, "We're you know we have all this footage behind the scenes that Hillary's campaign is shot, no one's seen, and mm. they're willing to do some kind of project with it." Um, and then Hulu is is on board with mm. doing it, so I met with Hulu, the producer, and and they also brought in Hillary to make sure she would be comfortable with whoever the director was. So I met with them. I was one of many directors, and I am said, "I don't want to." do a campaign film per se I think it's too soon too raw Um, and I think there's a much bigger more fascinating story to me when you see the scope and breadth of her life and how it affects uh, the history of the women's movement the history of our politics our culture and there's more insights and themes to explore if you expand it I was gonna say you you get this project and To me, it'd be like kind of a, we're going to have to bleep this out, but an oh shit moment. Yeah. So (laughs) can you talk through that process? Well, it's a very hard subject to take on. And, and, you know, my top line to this and my interest in doing this is I find her to be one of the most polarizing historical figures. Mm -hmm. Um, And she is both vilified and admired. And somewhere within that lies the real person. So... Because she's a polarizing figure, it's hard to ever. I just knew from the beginning, no matter what I do, I have to, you know, I want to make this as good, you know, just amazing. I, I hope it's incredible. But even if it is, there'll still be knocks because there's still going to be people that, right. you know, will just hate her no matter what is in the project. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just have to go on your own instinct and your interpretation and do as much research as you possibly can. I mean, the other part of her life, and the re- one of the reasons she's polarizing, is there have been a lot of uh, scandals, uh, there's been mythology, and you have to unpack some of that and understand it. Um, and you can really get lost in the rabbit hole, mm-hmm. at least for an audience, to, to do that. Um, but you also can't avoid it because it's, it's part of why we feel the way we feel about her. Mm-hmm. So it was a uh, it was a challenging project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love I love that approach to it because ever since the 2016 election, 24 hour news has been dissecting that election every and day. The, and that's <laughs> I mean we hear it and and that's fine. But I love that you took this personal approach because that's really. I think for us, it's like, why do I feel both ways about her? Why do I admire mm-hmm. her and also just... So I feel like for us, too, it's important to process. And maybe you're helping us process this by watching this film. I also think, though, it's beyond the election and processing. It's it's understanding our 
conceptions towards women and why, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, how do we feel about female candidates that we're seeing played out in 220. So if you go back all the way to her history and watch her growing up and what her culture was like then, what it was like in the second wave of feminism when she went to Yale Law School, the sort of um, obstacles that women had to overcome and tying to it to these historical moments throughout the whole thing, you really can see it in a different way. And you understand how hard it is for women. And, mm-hmm. and so the sexism and the misogyny used to be more overt now it's probably it's less but it's it still exists just in, a, in an unconscious way um and so i think it, it helps especially young women understand the history on a very intimate level mm-hmm. as opposed to just this broad educational well this happened and this happened in the women's movement it's it's a personal story but it's also a cultural narrative about that women can't win women can't do this women can't do that i mean like you said in the 2020 election we're hearing it all the time. So mm-hmm. um, has anything changed in, in your mind about the cultural narrative while doing this film? You know, I guess I was surprised at, you know, even in the 60s, the the level of vitriol aimed at young women who just wanted to come up and be a doctor or a lawyer. I mean, she tells this, this story in the series of when she went to take the bar exam um, in the early 70s that uh, she was one of very few women taking the bar. And the men, in before the exam started, started screaming at her and a couple of other women saying, you know, if you take my place, I'm going to get sent to Vietnam and I'm going to wow. die. And they're screaming at her. They're like, you're going to cause me to die. And then she has to take the exam. And what I also found interesting was her reaction to that was, you didn't say anything back back then. You just kept your head down, you kept your mouth shut, and you just did the work. And then you fast forward to now, wherever you know women are being encouraged to being authentic and to speak out for themselves, which is great, but it's so hard when you lived your life trying to be under the radar and, and pursue your dreams. Mm-hmm. And so that, I don't know, there's little intimate details I find very enlightening. Right, right. And and on the topic of intimate details, yeah. uh, of course, you want you want her to be forthcoming. You want to push to get these stories out that we haven't already heard. What was the process like getting her to trust you and and really open up? Well, I interviewed her for seven days. I mean, over a period of time. Um, and I think part of the process of her opening up was uh, we had a good rapport. Um, you know, she, I think she, you know, got into the realization that there's no gotcha moments per se that I wasn't you know digging uh in the quick soundbite way that a reporter has Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. I have all the time in the world (laughs) (laughs) you can go off on a you know tangent and eventually I'll just bring you back and so that really starts to put people at ease and they get into a flow of talking um and I think that's what happened and and on the on the topic of interviews, you also interviewed allies and critics mm-hmm. of of Hillary. And I was interested to know were there any people that that turned it down? Like, no, nope, I'm not going to be you know in in terms of allies or critics that you were sort of hoping for. Uh, yeah, about thirty something conservative voices. Turned it down. <laughs> I was only thirty. Surprise, surprise. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the exact number, and and really could not change their mind. Um, hmm. Wow. You know, even though I was like, look, there's, I have complete editorial control. You know, this, I'm trying to make a fair and balanced piece, which is why I want to include your voice. Right. You know, if I don't, if I can't include your voice, I'm not going to get that, you know, there's no narration per se. Mm-hmm. This right. is all coming from you. And still it was no. And I, 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 uh, I called Newt, I somehow got Newt Gingrich's cell phone number <laughs> after he had diplomatic me, uh, rejected our interview request in writing. And he picked up the phone. And he, he told me I'd rather stick a needle in my eye than uh, do an interview about Hillary Clinton. I would challenge him on that. Okay, let's see it. Let's <laughs> go it. ahead. Prove it. Let's Newt. do it. I'd yeah. like to see that on television, please. <laughs> Screening was amazing. I've never, I've screened uh, uh, four other films here. I've screened movies in a lot of different places. And this audience was rousing. I mean, they mm. would spontaneously clap at various points they would hiss at certain people they would <laughs> laugh at even the subtle humor so it was a uh, it was amazing I, I I went into the screening thinking I wasn't gonna stay because I've seen it like 
more times than I care to say. <laughs> and I just wanted to stay for a few minutes and make sure it looked good and sounded mm-hmm. good, yeah. and then I'd leave. And that, but the audience was so incredible in that room. I'm like, nah, this, I'm staying. This is too fun. Yeah. So. Um, I have a last pressing question for you. Yeah. I read that you own a bar in New York. Is that true? I did own a bar in New York for 20 years, oh. and it, it closed this past oh, year. Oh, no. Yeah. Are you going to uh, make a documentary about that? <laughs> <laughs> and now I'd have to then reveal where the bodies are buried. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. be continued then. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that was our interview from Sundance with the filmmaker of the Hillary episodic that's out on Hulu right now, Nanette Bernstein. She's a badass. Yeah, this this was a fun one, and unfortunately we didn't get to see it. We this did was not. one of the few that we didn't have any links and we couldn't get into the screenings of. But thankfully, to make up for the fact that we did not watch it, our producer, Shar got to see HRC live and in person. Oh, oh that's right. <laughs> I was like, where are you going with this? I was like, I did not see this Me either. I was like, uh, she didn't see it. No. I'm aware of. Yeah, like in the midst of us, you know, Aaron and I are doing one interview and Shar's producing that's another right. one. That's right. I totally she forgot about that. She sends us this video and we're like, what? And it's... She looks real short in the video too. She looks like a little petite. Well, woman. I was... Yeah, you... I don't know what you guys... Uh, you guys might I have know been exactly We were doing we were Ruby. Doing. We were... R- was it? Ruby Barra, I think. Oh, yeah. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. We were doing another. We you, were still working somewhere. Yeah. You were doing. I, well, wherever you guys were, I wanted to be, but I had to do this other offsite thing. Yes. Yeah. And I had to go to um, the end of Main Street because where we record is the top of Main Street. And I was heading down because uh, wherever that interview was, I think was at the at the bottom. It was where you saw the hotel. Um, Tim Daly. Tim Daly. Still kicking myself for not saying one goddamn thing. <laughs> you had to Anyways. pee. You had to pee. I really had to pee. I held it through the movie and, and the interview. And the interview. <laughs> it was like four hours of holding my for the interview. Yes. <laughs> Anyways. And uh, I couldn't go into an interview and be like, can I use your bathroom? And we, <laughs> In your room? Because we were also late. Yes. So, that too. Anyways. Anyways. Oh, that's right. That's right. Tim Daly, but, Hillary, HRC. Yeah. So while I was walking <laughs> down the street to go down to meet the other team members for our for our interview and it was like a dead stop like you couldn't do anything and i'm like what's going on it's like it's and it's, it's that like the president was there right yeah. it, well, it was like that that or four not. part Te- technically technically that the um popular vote it was like the fork uh, the big intersection yeah right in front of um the what egypt it, the uh, no. not egypt, egypt? it's um, it's that marriott yeah, where is it Dropbox or um, Audible? Audible, and there's a there's a there's one. Um, it's where we went to the party, our last party of last year. Yeah, but whatever whatever room that she was going into, I forgot oh. what lounge it is or uh-huh. whatever. And it's like that's where I guess that's where everybody hangs out because that's where all the photos are taken. Uh, it's like the step and repeat. Yeah, it's like that's where everybody that does. And, and all the you know big names uh, and all the people that are doing press for Sundance, they all have to go there at some point to get their professional photos taken. Right. And so she was going in there, and it was like everybody's like, "What's going on?" What? And it's like, yeah, they had a total motorcade yeah. stopped, and she was just walking. She walked across the street, and oh. I was, and walked across the street. She didn't get out of a car or anything like that. I don't know where she came from, but she just walked. In. Wow. <laughs> and yeah. I was able, I was close That's enough awesome. that I was able to take that clip real quick and then i sent it to you guys i was like well we did see her yeah well you saw her yeah yeah that was cool oh sundance it feels like four years ago Mm -hmm. anyways um yeah support nanette and uh watch hillary on hulu (laughs) all four episodes are out right now um i'm looking forward to uh what nanette and hillary are doing next so um Stay tuned. And in the meantime, you can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can also find us every Monday morning on bff.fm oh, yeah. from 6 to 6.30. We were powered by GoTo Productions. Bitch, please. <laughs> <laughs>